from the heights of Cucamonga Peak and the depths of Alta Loma, it's live on the couch with Dr. Strange. Hey, that's my cue. I'm here. Thank you, everyone. Yay! Thank you all once again. I got a head rush. Seriously, I think I'm pregnant. I really do have. I have Ron's anal baby. But we'll talk about that later because we have on the couch another phenomenal band. Uh, I really am grateful for these guys and everyone else, past, future, present. I got that order reversed for the lower class brats. So let's ask some questions. And also, please, guys, I know you guys watch as you do on Friday. Send some comments, send some questions. Nothing stupid. I already know their dick sizes, but if you have any questions you want, just. Drop them in the comments. Drop it in the comments. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Let's introduce yourselves so everyone knows, including the FBI, because I know they're watching. Hi, I'm Ron. I'm the Mexican. Yes, he is. <laughs> that is the Mexican. INS. I'm uh, Martin Stallion. <laughs> I play guitar. Uh, what? Uh, you, got, you got to shake. Oh, you got to shake. Got, you I know. thought he did. Oh, I thought that oh, was his dick. I oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm Zed. I play guitar. I'm Bones. I sing. All right. Okay, thanks. Bye, guys. We'll okay, see you next cool. time. All right, here we go. So, we got that. I got a few questions for you guys. Thank you, seriously, for showing up. Oh, I don't think I can get back up. Okay, got a few questions. We'll just, we'll just wing it. If I can get them out. That's not winging it. You have well, I just have general questions. Don't look over my shoulder. Okay, well, what's... I mean, I've known a lower class brats for a long time. And I think you've been together even longer than even I know. What's like the beginnings pre lower class brats? What turned into and became the lower class brats? When did you start? Uh, well, the band started in '95 in January. Uh, prior to that, I had met Marty. I had moved to Austin, Texas. From, from where? Yeah, no, okay. I met this clown over here, yeah. and. Uh, he was playing in a band called The Covers at the time, and they did originals, but they did covers too, you know, and they were, uh, you know, doing stuff like in Austin in, in the mid-90s, you know, late, between the late 80s and early 90s, uh, the, you know, punk comes in waves, and it kind of died out, and there was a lot of, you know, lookout bands coming out, yep. and amp rap and stuff like that, and in Austin, it was, uh, it was a lot of garage and that type of stuff, and like, which I like, you know, all types of music, it was great bands, but it wasn't the stuff that, up on. When I went to go see Marty's band uh, play, they were, you know, doing like Angelic Upstarts covers mm. and, and uh, Clash and, you know, things of that nature and kind of stole them out of his band. Did you so, go just to see Marty as a friend or was it just no, happenstance no, you saw this band I called the covers see, and really dug on him? Yeah. Just, I saw a flyer that had Andy Cap like, uh, stinking, you yeah, know, and so I was like, just cool. like, all right, cool. And it, it, uh, you know, I'm like, cool, I'll go down and check them out. And it was, uh, I met him that night his phone number and we talked and uh, actually me and Marty started playing together and we're like, oh, we need a bass player. So we got the bass player out of the covers oh. too. And, uh, um, and the, did the, the covers ever record of... anything? Um, yeah. We you did? did? We did two seven inches on, uh, what's it, I'll be... I'll be Dead in Hell. It was uh, the guys from Quincy Punks. Oh. That label. And they did two singles. That was their label? Even I don't know that label. And I should know that. I have a store. <laughs> I'll be dead in hell. That's a great name. So, well, I would. Well, now that people know, I'm sure people already knew that. But I bet those records might go for a couple bucks. Yeah, it's, it's it, an interesting thing. I know how collectors. It, it, yeah. yeah, I you know I have no idea. They what just went out. Everyone's like discogs right yeah, now. Like, <laughs> I couldn't sell it for two bucks. Now it's ten. Yeah. <laughs> now you can retire. Yeah, I'll have to dig out my multiple copies. Yeah. Sitting here, closet. just sitting there. Yeah. So that's cool. You got Marty and the bass player. And you got Bones. You start lower class brats. How'd you come up with that name? What was the the motivation for it? What was um, the motivation for that name? When we had started, there was a, there was another band I was, I was roommates with actually, and they were called the Chumps. Um, and the Chumps had uh, we both started around the same time, and they were originally called lower class brats. Um, and we couldn't come up with a name. We'd come up with so many stupid names. Mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, Bulldog Sect. That was one of the names. Like, nah, yeah. And we're like, nah, dude. Look at us, dude. You know, we ain't tough. So uh, <laughs> could call it Bulldog Sex. That, yeah. That would have been good. Yeah. Uh, the number one song, Doggy Style. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, we asked him if they could have uh, my friend Frankie, who me and him are both you know huge Germs fans. Um, I asked him if I could have the name, and he's like, yeah, you know. And I, I'd known where he got it from, and it was actually from the inside liner notes of uh, the Rourke set. Uh, the Rourke set. Uh -huh. And it was calling uh, the Germs. It was a review of their show that's in the liner notes in there, and it calls uh, them and their fan club of seven surfers a bunch of lower class brats. That's a, yeah. So that's what the name. Came the from. name was already great, but now it's even better. It's a cool <laughs> story. I really like. I've always thought the name was good. It's really catchy. It sticks with you. That that's a great. I like the reason behind that. It's an excellent. Cool. So when you okay, so you're born in California, then you moved to Austin. I moved to Austin when I was 21. Um, from San Diego, I grew up there. Okay, and uh, that's your roots. Yeah, that's my roots in San Diego. Yeah. And you just said one day I'm out of here. Yeah, it got. It was about that time for me to leave. You know, there's just a lot of bullshit happened when you're a kid, and like you know, 21, you think the world's weighing down your shoulders, and, mm -hmm. and that you have to run away from everything. And I ran away, but I actually, you know, went out there and I, you know, got myself, got my shit together. Good. You know, fell in love with the city, stayed there and ended up there for almost 26, 27 years. So I just moved back to San Diego right. in January this year, January 17th. So now you're back, mm -hmm. Ron's back. What have you? Um, I just moved from Austin to San Diego also. Oh, good. Uh, just about a year ago, last, last summer. He's the only um, Texan in the band. I'm the only Texan. You were born yeah. in Texas. I was born in Texas and I lived in Austin so I grew up uh, about an hour north of Austin, Texas. Moved there as soon as I was out of my parents' house, you know, I was 17. So. I've never been, but I've always heard it's a very music-related, or it's very music-friendly, right? It is, or it city. was. It was. Point. Yeah, but, uh, Not so much anymore? I mean, it's 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 changed a lot. I don't know like, what, uh, what to really say about it. Yeah. It's a city. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be out here. So. California's the best. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, it really is. And what about you? Where, so where I, are I you from? I was born and moved around a lot from Virginia, but Virginia was kind of the, the home base, and then now I live in Elsinore. So. Oh, right on. So. Okay, so everyone's in Southern yeah. California. And how did you get in touch with, how did this... Well, Ron, I, well, it's funny, so I, I've known Ron's wife, so she actually sold me my first punk rock records in, when I was growing up how did in she, Richmond, Virginia. Through the mail? No, Tell no, me that no. I, I lived in Richmond. But how did you get Ron, with uh, Ron? So later on, uh, I was in this band, Darkest Hour, and uh, Ron was working at Revelation Records at the time. As I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he was looking to sign Darkest Hour, and he'd come out, and then that was the first time I met Ron. And then later on, he managed Darkest Hour for a while. We actually started working on a, a new project, and, which uh, isn't done yet, but it is going to happen. It has happened. We're doing a, a project <clears throat> band together. Awesome. Right now. Well, now that you open that door, um, there's a back door to open there somewhere. Uh -oh. So I don't know if you guys <laughs> know this, but this is Ron Martinez, Final Conflict, Crawl Space Booking. Name a band. He probably manages that band, including the lower class brands. And that was one of my questions. It's got to be a weird thing. I'm a band member. I'm the manager, you have a lot of hats to wear, is, is it ever, how, how does that work? How does that, like? Well, I'm actually, I, I do kind of ghost manage some bands, but I'm not a manager in the sense where like, I take the title and I can't take money for being You're a manager. You're a booking guy. I'm a booking agent, That's what I'm so I'm responsible for organizing the tours, I'm uh, uh, doing that. How I learned how to do that was by being in bands and being the manager of the band and organizing the show. So it became a snowball effect, including Final Conflict. I, that's you, where I started. Was yeah. learned, I learned I handled all the Final Conflict stuff. So um, it, 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 it was basically a snowball effect. Like I handled all of the booking for my bands, and then we would play with our friends, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Why is it that when we play with you, you guys get paid? You guys get..." The, you guys get the free root beer. Yeah, you know? right. Okay. <laughs> you know? That's and, not free, by the way. We, <laughs> so look at the fine print. But yeah, like they were like, you guys always, you know, come away with like getting treated fair. Yeah, like, we and, and I was like, oh, well, this is how you do it. And so a lot of bands just started going, can you just do it for us? And I was like, well, I got this crappy day job that I fucking hate. Maybe I'll 
take yeah. shows for my friend's band because I like to do that. And it, again, snowball fact, now that's what I do for a living. My day job is I book tours for bands. But I don't just book tours for any band. I book tours. You've either got to be a group of people that I'm friends with or that I like and I, and I like you personally or I love your band, I love your music and then I get to know you and I like you personally yeah. and then I'll do it. Like it's just like, it's one of the things I learned from punk rock is you do what you love, you do it because you love it. I don't- I say that all yeah, the time. Like, I don't take a band right. on because it's like, uh, you this band's gonna money. be huge. Yeah. I'm gonna make so much money. Like you don't, I don't. That's Those not my motivation. To yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. And I like your story because it's. I think it's uh, true in most things. Not even music, but you know, you have to have a passion for what you like. And a lot of times, when you do have a passion, it kind of branches off, and you do a good job at it because you like doing it, and other people notice that, and they want to be part of your team, and and you're doing what you love to do. Rattle off, he has one of the strongest rosters. I'll, I'll get it back to lower class brats, but I think it's worth saying. You have one of the strongest rosters. Thanks, man. You really do. And he's a good guy, and they're great bands, and he treats people well. I don't know if you want to name the other bands. You don't have to, you don't want to, but there's some killer stuff that I really, really like. I, you know, um, no, I don't okay. want to because I don't want to toot my own horn. Okay. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lucky guy. You like, are. I have a punk rock day job. You, you have a, we, yeah. we both, like, we're all in the same we wheelhouse. We're doing what we love. I, all you guys, I totally recommend, like, do what you love, whether it's plumbing, uh, cat sitting, like, whatever, figure out a way to make it work. Do not have a shit, uh, I think one of the best things I ever saw was watching a documentary called DOA. It's about the Sex Pistols American Tour. And they're interviewing one of the members of Generation X, and he's, they ask him why he's in a band, and he says, I didn't want to spend my life working at a warehouse and saying, gee, one day I hope I can become head stacker of boxes, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. I've lived my life like that, like trying, <laughs> finding what you love and figuring out a way to make it work, yeah. you know? Because you will, when you love something and money's not your goal, um, just enjoying going to work. Like yeah. I tell people, I haven't worked in 29 years. I'm doing this that long. It's not a job. It's a lot of work quote unquote work, but yeah, so you get it. Yeah. And I hope people listen to that, because it's 100% true. So now you're playing bass. Yeah, I've been playing bass for a while. Like I've been playing in different bands. I played in 46 Short, I played in yeah, Serial I Killing 101. I played, uh, I'm losing, uh, whatever. I play. I sat in with Click 45 uh, off and on. I've been their booking agent for, when did we start working together? 2001, All Days in the Sun. Okay, like, in Jersey. and and I was kind of like the ghost manager. Like these guys, have, these two have always run the band, but there would be times like we have an idea. What do you think of this? Is this a good move? Is this a bad move? And so I always was kind of the Oz, the man behind the curtain. Yeah. And yeah. then one day after the uh, tour with uh, what was the tour? the Necromantics tour, Necromantics Casualties tour, uh, Evo quit the band. Uh, couldn't couldn't tour anymore, and the band had we had a, had a show that had to be done. It was a benefit for a friend of ours that was was dying. Oh, fuck. There was no way the band was going to cancel it, mm -hmm. and the guys were in a panic. Like, what do we we need to do, we need a bass player in like, like a week now. and a half? Yeah. So I was like, well, I know most of the songs yeah, in my course, head. Yeah. I had produced the new Seditionaries. Like I was oh, I the producer that. of that record, so it was kind of like I haven't touched my bass in six years. Uh, I'll play bass. <laughs> you know, like, Just turn me down. Yeah, no, that yeah. was, seriously, I'm going to be really low. And uh, we did the gig. It was a blast. And then it was like, Ron, do you want to go to Australia with us? With us? Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Australia with you guys. And then I have to quit the band. Yeah, no. You need to find a real <laughs> bass player. I'm not a real bass player. And, and I still, yeah, yeah and I have other things to do. Well, I'm still not a real bass player, but now I'm a bass player, a permanent bass player with brass. Yeah, and long term. Yeah, film. so it's like, yeah, they won't let me quit. Yeah, I, I can see why. And one day I'll learn how to play bass. Oh, one day. You just, you just drink your root beer. That's, that's all, all you have to worry about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you, Bones mentioned earlier, and I imagine this is the answer to your question, but let's go through all you guys. Starting with Bones, name a record that really turned a light on your head and changed your life. I think everyone has that record. What's yours? Was it a Germs record or? No, the, nope. it was actually, when I was a little kid, I was about 13 years old, my grandmother, she was really cool. And I was getting into punk rock. And she had, uh, for 
Christmas, she gave me this box, and uh, it had a book in it uh, called, uh, you might have, uh, Old old punk book. From, I can't picture it, but yeah. So I have a copy at home. I, I, I found one online, so I re it. Oh, you know, cool. So I have one Sentimental. Now. And, uh, and a spiked gauntlet that was way too big for me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm sorry, uh, how old are you at this point? About? I'm 13. <laughs> I'm about 83. I'm about 13. And uh, so I'm just getting into punk. And, uh, and it, she also bought me the damned machine gun etiquette. Uh huh. Your grandma and was cool. She was sweet. And uh, that record stuck with me, you know, it's like, because I'd heard other bands, you know, I'm listening to, I've heard Black Flag and the Sex Pistols and growing up in San Diego, the Italian the Saints were the band, you know, oh, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, and, you know, Circle Jerks, Dead Kennedys and stuff. And I heard this damned record and I was like, wow, you know, there's piano, there's different stuff. This is a whole different realm of punk to me, you know, and, uh, they just stayed, they kind of stayed that band to me, you right. know? And that record, most of all, probably changed. That's it? Yeah, that was Machine Gun Etiquette, yeah. That was the record that kind of set me off. Cool. What about you? What, what was that one? Man. It doesn't have to well, be a punk record. Anything right, yeah, well, it was like, it was kind of a, a two-stage two thing. So, like, I, I, my first exposure to, like, heavier music was through Headbangers Ball. Oh yes, and like who was the know, Ricky Rack? Ricky Rack yeah. was like <laughs> my you know my staple, and like watching you know staying up late and watching all those bands, and then you know when I was watching it was toward you know later '80s, so like it was starting to you know it was a few heavier bands and stuff in there, and then a lot of the the pop metal kind of stuff. But the first time I saw a, it was like a classic Van Halen live. Uh, show from his like the Hydra Sheep tour for I guess we just got a warning or whatever. I'm just like, what is this? And I was just like, man, I really want to play, play an instrument. That's is that amazing. what did it to you? And, like that got me started, but then like I, it seemed bigger than life. Like watching like all these bands in arenas and like yeah, that is big. How, how do I go from my bedroom to an arena? Like that doesn't seem impossible. Yeah. And then like. Uh, I'm a little bit younger, but like, you know, my, my first uh, punk show was like the aha moment. Like, I saw in Richmond, uh, this band of Bale. Yeah. And uh, was, that's where they're from, right? Right, yeah. yeah and early band. on, like, with, with Rancid, right. uh, they played. And I was like, oh shit, like, I could probably do, do this. That. And then, so like, the first, like, like, a Bale was probably like Dixie, I think. It was one of the first, like, punk records. Like, I went to their shows, like, religiously right and then like and those bands like taught like a lot of the other Richmond punk bands like you can tour you can book your own tour and mm -hmm. just like that was kind of like the collective aha uh -huh moment for uh, getting me into punk and the really one to, to what, what about you Marty? Uh, okay a little background so like early 80s uh, probably 13 14 um, I really had, had no idea what a punk rock was, but I was an aspiring guitar player. Were there other punks in Texas? No. no, no I wouldn't not think so. Uh, skateboarders, maybe. Oh, okay. You know, oh. That was the closest. But um, So at the time, I was really, you know, I wanted to, uh, I was really into Jimmy Page, Richie Blackmore, heavier stuff, you know, um, and guitar, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that and like ACDC, Young Brothers. Um, and the first, uh, and then I just remember hearing, uh, I don't know, it was the first one, one of the first three Ramones records. Sure. Um, I kind of bumbled it together. Yeah, I know, me too. You I know, it's too. like one long record, but, um, and then seeing that and reading some interviews, you know, with the Ramones and how they played, made me realize that I wasn't stuck here trying to study music theory or learn practice these scales that I could write songs and maybe play in a band, start a band and do this myself right now. You know, because mm -hmm. I don't have the patience for that. You know, um, so that kind of put me in that direction. On the, on the same uh, foot, uh, it also made me a really lazy player. You know, <laughs> I pretty much shelved all that studying and all that to do to play bar chords, right. one, two, three, but um, you know, chainsaw Johnny Ramone guitar. So yeah, that's where I am still. Well, that's okay. I mean, at least you're doing something that you love, and that, that's the thing that yeah. 
What about you, Ron? Um, it, it is, like, we all have a big musical background, and I, as a kid, like, I love Kiss and Alice Cooper and and stuff like that, Cheap Trick, yeah, and, Cheap like, Trick. And, and a lot of, like, uh, and I got really into, like, like, in the late 70s, really into power pop, new wave stuff, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Elvis Costello, um, you know, and I started, and I knew punk rock, but I was just kind of like, ah, it's a little wild, and, like, it's not my thing, you know. I'll, I'll listen to Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers mm -hmm. and the Pretenders. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, me that's too. my I thing, totally yeah. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine goes, Hey, uh, our friend Casey's an extra in this movie and it's mm -hmm. playing at the Brea Theater. Let's go see it. Suburbia. And then, no, oh. I, I'll go bring ahead. up Suburbia again. I have oh. a funny thing to tell you about. And the movie was called Rock and Roll High School. Oh. And the Ramones were in it. I knew who the Ramones were, but I didn't really care about punk rock. And when those live scenes came on, when they're playing at the Roxy, and and I was like, I fucking dig punk rock. Yeah. Like this is awesome. Like the Ramones, like it was the Ramones were already were known as the gold standard. Sure. And that was like, you know what? If this is what punk rock is. I want in. Like I, so it was the Ramones. Like changed my life about music, and and I was all in. The record that changed me about like what music can be and what punk could be is definitely too is the Adolescence Blue album which hearing that record for the first time made me so proud because I'm like a kid in Orange County and these guys live like one city away from me I live in Atlanta Park they live in Fullerton mm -hmm. like these guys like you can see what the grocery store I know I saw Steve <laughs> Soto at the bus stop waiting for the bus you know and I'm like that dude waits for the bus just like me and he just made one of the most awesome records ever, you know? That's really cool. And 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 how good it was and the harmonies and it was everything being great. Still is. Yeah, it's still still an amazing Probably record. Best. The next record was was Machine Gun Etiquette by the Dam, what punk could be. Because it had everything. And it made you know like, hey, it's cool if you want to throw piano on yes. the record. You know? Totally or, agree. That it's yeah. funny, uh, because normally when I ask that question, it is the dam and the remote. I don't know if that means anything, but those are, I mean, they're old bands, you know, from 76, and it does say a lot. It does say a lot. Yeah, it's, you know. it's kind of neat. Okay, so tell me your story about Suburbia, the movie Suburbia. I was an extra in Suburbia. Oh, were you really? Me and my five best friends from high school, one of them was Warren from Final Conflict as well. We got a phone call from Jack from TSOL on a Sunday. He says, hey, we're doing some fucking movie with <laughs> Bill Spheris directing. They need a bunch of extras. We're doing a show. You got to be there by noon. And we showed up at this club. I don't know if you ever went to it. It was called Gods, G-O-D-S. It lasted maybe a year off of Las Palmas. And we showed up. There was about maybe maybe 75 to 100 punk kids. They were all, none of, all of us were punks from the scene. We all knew each other. And all the concert scenes were filmed there. There, like in one night at the same place, with Vandals, T.S.O.L. and um, D.I. Wow, how long did that take? That was an all-day shoot. We were there for 12 hours, from 12 uh, noon to 12 midnight. We got five dollars each uh -huh. and steak dinner. Like, did you have to sign off? On a, we had to sign yeah. a writer. And I remember oh, when funny. the movie finally came out. Like all of us went. Like, yeah. It lasted. Remember, it lasted like a week. Yes. At, yes, at, yes. And yes. we all went to and saw it at the city in Orange with the, the mall. All my friends went and we saw it. I remember we were so bummed because we're like. <laughs> This makes us look bad. This makes us look like uh, dummy drunks, and you know, we. I remember we were all crushed. And then it's funny because I watched Suburbia about maybe five years ago, and I was mm -hmm. like, no, we all had that one dummy friend that was always causing fights. Sure. We all had that one, and it actually kind of that's what it was like. Yeah, we just didn't want to get into the truth that we were a bunch of, a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's the one thing that blows that's people fun. mind is like. There's like certain scenes where you can freeze, and I go, "See, there I am. I'm right there on stage." Di. Did you have your like, hair all spiked? Like no, no, no. I, nope. Just short black hair with my white Sex Pistols "God Save the Queen" shirt oh, on. Oh, that's pretty cool. And stuff, yeah. So not a lot of people can say that. I yeah, mean, that's pretty neat. That's such a iconic movie. You know, even though you're just in the background, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay, everyone. What's your favorite line from the movie? Uh, Mr. Bria. Uh, what is it? Uh, Wake up, you can't sleep here. The snails will crawl. Marty. You can't remember. I'll Marty. give you one. Happy Easter, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I like the one when he when Jack Dilly throws the, the beer can, a beer bottle at the bus, and he just goes, 
I hate buses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have uh, an online question. We have more, but and I have no idea what this means. Someone, one of your fans, just asked the question, Arby's? Does that mean anything to you at all? I don't know what that means. Arby's? Arby's. Um, it's good new food. Actually, you know what? Arby's was uh, uh, the first job I ever had. Oh, that's where it comes from. I don't know how anyone would know that. They know stuff. <laughs> Mine was Taco Bell. Well, maybe I should add it to the Wikipedia. You should. I already did this morning. Okay, cool. And some I other stuff that, that might be embarrassing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only rock I said that was your job. That wasn't a very good question whoever asked that. I don't know. Okay, here's another one that probably sucks from online. Um, Bones, how long? You're sober. I am. How long has that been? It. What time okay. is it? <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm not going to lie or stretch the truth or anything like that. So, yeah, I was sober for three years. Um, I have drinks here now again. It's uh, something that I was in a really bad period of my life when I sobered up. And it's things that, you know, like I'm a bartender. So yeah, I heard being, that. Being behind the bar and everything is, is totally fine for me. It's being on the other side. It's sticking around. So now i got a cat and I go home. Sit with my cat, you know. Yes. Um, Scott Bell of Rat to go home, you know, go home to you. Know. Yeah, if there's if there's anything that I drink, it might be uh, once or twice a week and a couple shots. And that's just normal on, on, on a bad day. Go home, go Do you feel any pressure from people, like, as, for lack of a better word, being a role model? And like, well, I do. Bones I, does it, and, 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 and you just, know, what, you, you know, it's like, I, you know, it's like I don't want to lie to anybody because people are people. And everyone sure. is different, and everyone's going to have these things that they go through. Um, and yeah, you know, it's like I don't want to say I have it under control because no one does, you know. Um, and my drinking, stopping drinking, was for a lot for very personal reasons of things that were happening in my life, and uh, those things have changed. I've moved to San Diego, you know, things like that, but. Being, you know, people looking up to me as a role model and something like that, it, it does bother me a bit. And I don't like to see anyone, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that have bad things going on, you know. We try and write positive songs about positive things, but also realizing that reality is reality and people are people. As long as you can keep in control of your demons, mm -hmm. you know, and not, don't be a dick. Right. You know? Yeah. You said it. People are people. And everyone is good and bad, and does good things and does bad things, and that's called being a human being. Right, right. So, I wouldn't want to be in your position as far as a lot of eyes on you. Right, um, sure. You know, it, this is like maybe for me, like an added stress, but, right. you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and, totally. and you're a nice person. So, in that sense, well, you are a role model. Uh, you can take it if you want to. <laughs> yeah, okay. do, you, do you need to get that? It's probably my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so when you guys were growing up, you mentioned awesome bands like the Germs, the Dance, it's, the Ramones. It's actually my mom. Is it really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, <laughs> she probably watched. She probably just missed style. I think we're like next to each other on her. <laughs> <laughs> what bands have you guys played with where you're like, oh man, I cannot believe we're playing with this band. I listened to these guys when I was younger and, and you kind of idolize these bands. Like, I'm sure there's several. Or do you even feel that way? Are they all just equal playing field or is there a band that you can say I can't believe I'm kind of nervous we're playing with these guys I hope we don't suck you know what I mean like really intimidated by these guys sure I mean that's happened a lot it's it's really cool to be able to meet uh, meet and um, hang out with you know some of the people you've looked up to sure. you know it's like I you know the reason this band started the reason we wrote this song or that song is is uh, um, is because of these guys, right. you know. And now we're getting to sit in the same room with them. We're, we're talking with them for the show. We're hanging out after the show, you know. And, mm -hmm. and uh, certain, yeah, there's been a lot of bands. I can't really think of one off the top of Fox my head. Bar. Oh, I bet. Fox Bar, yeah. 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 Um, That's a great. Special Duties, like we, I, we, we just played two shows of Special Duties. I remember listening to uh, the their second seven inch and as a, as a 17 year old and going I'm never going to get to see this band mm -hmm. ever live and 
they, and they're still great. They're yeah, they're great. still great, and they they cornered me and were just saying how much they had loved our show. That See, night. that's you really know, like, neat. We, we had such a good time playing with you, and that, that's just something else. It's something else, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah, it's it's one of the great things about playing pop rock music is that, and and it, I, it's one of the, like Marty explained it was it's the music that is connected to the people, like like blueses or anything like. Uh, you can do it. Yeah. Yes. You know? And you can. We make a point when we play shows. We are not isolated in the dressing room all night. Mm -hmm. If there's a if there's a dressing room, we go walk around. We yeah. try to Shake hang out. And, yeah. And, and, and you should just hang out. Yeah. You know. We we have a band rule. Like when we play a show, we watch at least two songs from every band that oh, we I love play that. because we've been that band where we've opened up for someone and the headlining band that doesn't even show up till like so, 10 minutes before they play and that's that's a bum out man yeah that's kind of like a middle finger i've always thought that it's just you know? not very cool or the local band who plays and then they all pack up and leave oh i hate you that know? too any of you guys that have done that local band shame on you that's a dick move <laughs> and that's why you don't get asked to play a second time and it's all like, about yeah. support punk rock is about supporting each other and which I, you know, it's just about being a good person. Yeah, it's you about know, being like a good I said, person. we we have a band rule. It's an unwritten thing, but we all do. Like, watch at least two songs of every yeah. band. So when they come up to you and they say, "Hey, what are you doing our set?" You're not lying to them. We go, "Yeah, you know that one song with the guitar. Loved yeah. it. <laughs> that one song that ended, my favorite. Right? <laughs> you know, like no, we don't. We, we watch every band. Like, you know, have an informed opinion. Just be nice. Yes. One thing I like about. Punk, you mentioned special duties, you know, when we were kids, you know, that was a big band that's really cool. And now they're still an awesome band. They're older, but they attract a crowd from 13 to our, or older than us, too. And that's what's so cool about punk. Age is irrelevant. And I like working here when people come in, like the dad comes in with their kid and they're buying the adolescent. And the dad's like, oh, I saw these guys. And it's just such a cool, unique. I don't know if that's true in other music we're, scenes. We're, we're having that happen now. Where sure. Like parents yeah, you've been their kids. Years. They, they grew up. Now they're like, our kids are coming to see Here's us. You know? Yeah. Uh -huh. I know and that's why weird. we have to play with bands like Special Duties or Youth Brigade, so we're not the oldest band. There you go. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So let's talk about your new record. I know there's a new record coming out pretty soon, right? Is it recorded? What's the deal on this? On the 12th. Wow, really? Of August. No, the 12th. All right, so I can't wait for the 12th. What's today? <laughs> what year is it? That's the question. Um, All right, stay tuned for the 12th. <laughs> uh, okay. the, uh, the album's going to be called um, The Wild, the Ugly, and the Damned. The, the Wild, the Ugly, and the Damned. Yeah. Who's the ugly? Uh, no, the it, it, it's basically... <laughs> uh, it, it's basically... Uh, it, it, the... the the whole record is stories, like you know, bones, real life stories of people we know. So it's about different elements and things that have crossed our lives. So the full title is Tales of the Wild Ugly and the Dan, but we're just going to simplify it. And everyone has contributed like a story or a song or I mean like a, a theme to a certain song? It's all about we, your we, personal We stories. all, collectively, everyone in the band has written on this. There cool. isn't like, uh, like not just one person. We wrote it as a band, um, and, and Bones writes all the lyrics, but they're all based on inter interactions that we've had as a band, or and as individuals and people it's we've come across. <clears throat> a lot of lyrical content on the new record is, uh, um, it's mostly the same stuff that I've been writing before. There's anthems on it, there's, you know, it's like a lot of, you know, personal strife through life, and just being a human being, and like, you know, it's like pulling through on things, and seeing things through. Cats. It's talks about cats and rock and roll. Like all so, the all the old dudes are pissed is like our our ode to like our favorite like rock and roll bands, Slade, Sweet, you know, like Bowie and and um, it's all wrapped up in one song. Like uh, you when you read the lyrics you'll actually go, Oh, that's a line from Quattro, that's a line from you know that like I love what he did with the lyrics on that. So song. musically it's lower class brats, but maybe emotionally you put is it more emotional, lyrically? Like, is it more heartfelt, or who knows? Um, no, I think it's pretty much the same as, as, you know, I would hopefully like to compare it to, you know, uh, like, something like our second album, like, Plot Seconds, mm. you know, in lyrical content. Um, uh, but the songs, it's, 
pretty much basic, you know. It's I would like to hope it just it sounds like the brass. Yeah. You know? It's probably um, hard not to. You know, to it, it's mean. it's you know, we can't be the judge of that. These right. guys are the judge. Yeah. And when it comes out, they'll let us know, you know. We'll, well figure it out real quick. Speaking <laughs> of that, how can they let you know? Let's mention how they can get in touch with you guys, either by Facebook, your website. How can people watching and in the store uh, oh we're on get in touch? Well, all the social medias, um, except for the Twitters, the Facebooks, yeah, the, the Google's, Google. 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 your MySpaces, yeah, My Friendster, okay, Friendster, Grinder. So just Google. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, just run. Anything else you guys want? <laughs> you want to say as we leave? No more Ruby for you. <laughs> just thanks for having us. Oh no, thank, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys for very watching. Thanks for yeah, thank you for watching. Yeah, you we'll see you next time. We have some stuff in store for you guys. We'll see you on Friday, of course. Thank you all you guys for showing up, except for Jimmy and Jake. Those guys are assholes. And I thank you all one thank you. and each and all and you and you, you. and you and you and Debbie Johnson. Okay. See you Friday. Bye bye. Boop, boop.